Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Yomi. My name is Yomi and I make college art and travel related videos. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you the painting process of this amazing painting that I did that took so long for me to complete. And I would please ask that you stay for a good portion of this video because I know sometimes you guys will really like a video but will only stay for maybe two or three minutes of a creator's video because maybe you wanna do something else. But that can really harm a creator's channel and it will tell YouTube that you're not interested in this creator's content at all, so it won't recommend it to people. So I would please ask that you stay for a good portion of this video because I spent so long on this painting and this video and it's so dear to my heart. Thank you so much. So the point of this painting is the use of cowrie shells and clothing around the world and their significance. So this is a part two to a painting that I created two years ago, my freshman year, which I'm going to show you in a few seconds. My freshman year of college, I'm now a junior in college. Um, yeah, so this summer I traveled to the Pacific Islands, so think like Hawaii area. I traveled to some countries in Melanesia and a few places in Polynesia, and I bought a lot of cowrie shell necklaces, and that inspired me to do this second piece. So this is a painting that I did my freshman year of college, which was around two years ago, and it was a really intense painting. I stayed up until seven in the morning, one night painting it. It took me around a week of planning and painting, and. It was so laborious, but it was worth it. And now I'm going to show you some cowrie shells and cowrie necklaces that I bought in the South Pacific, which is where I lived this summer. So think Polynesia, Melanesia, Micronesia. So I found a cowrie shell on the beach. So excited. First time finding if that's what I think it is, actually it may not be, a cowrie shell in the ocean, is that what I think it is? It is. I found one. My first time finding a cowrie in the ocean. Found some on the beach. Before. I just yeah. bought this necklace. J'ai acheté cette parou. Oui, parure. Parure. Oui. Oui. Les porcelaines. Yes. Oui, merci. So I bought some cowrie shells here in this village, but for some reason you can't really see that clearly the cowrie shells that they were selling. Salut, je suis la personne qui a ceci pour Oui, I so those were some shell necklaces and some shells that I found and bought this summer in the South Pacific. The research process. So I first started off researching which cultures use cowrie shells and I would look over the internet to see what I could find and then I started doing research on the different species of cowrie shells um, and I did some sketches of them. Usually most of them are in black and white. After that I started to do some sketches and research through academic articles and photos online to do some visual research about the different cultures that I could find that use cowrie shells. And these are some examples of the sketches. I did over a hundred sketches and of course I did a lot of research behind the scenes where the information isn't listed here, but this is just to show you some of the research I was doing. Important part of my research process, which I'm hoping to use this book in the future, an important part of my research process was this book which it's quite expensive, but it's a book about the different species of cowries and um, it shows like where some of these cowries were found and it gives detailed images and a little bit of information about the cowries and the species and the size and it was just really, really useful. So I plan to use this book in the future because I want to do a lot more research about this topic of cowrie shells. So there's so many different species. And the books is by Felix Lorenz. Cowrie is a guide to the gastropod family. So right now I'm in the Rizzi Nature Lab, which 
Hat, which is basically a library of living and deceased specimens of like coral, of shells, of animals, of plants, of insects that you can check out and you can look at and you can draw. So I checked out some shells from here and I also brought some of my own shells. And then I checked these out from the nature lab. So I brought some of my own cowrie shells and one of my shell necklaces. Some of my own different species of cowrie shells. And I'm putting them under a microscope so that I can draw from them. And I can look through the microscope. And I have my sketchbook here to help me find out about the patterns and the species of cowries. So we've come up a long way. Been here a few hours. The painting process. So honestly, this painting took a lot out of me. I would wake up in the morning. For the first few days that I was painting, I'd wake up in the morning and would be so upset because I knew I would have to paint this because it was so big and it was so scary to me because I'd never painted anything this big. So I was just overwhelmed and it would make my stomach hurt that I would have to paint this big painting. I was like, why did I decide to make this painting this big? So a little context is that when I first decided to do this painting, I bought this big canvas from my university art store. And when I was doing the research, the background research for the cultures that use the, the cowrie shell, I realized that the painting, the surface was not big enough. So I bought one that was around two to three times the size and this was definitely big enough for me to paint on. So it was a little bit difficult finding a canvas that was big enough for me to paint on and it was a hassle but I got it done. In the beginning this process was very painful because I tried to make a frame for this before making the painting and it just wasn't working because the frame was so big it couldn't support itself and I was using clay and wire and styrofoam and it just wasn't working. So I decided to to ditch the frame and just focus on the painting and maybe later I can decide to make a frame but as of right now it's just going to stay as a tapestry which is like how the first painting that I did about the cowrie shell was. So right here I'm sketching, doing a little bit of underpainting but predominantly I'm, I'm sketching right now uh, the, the different people who are going to be on this canvas and the different elements of, of this painting. This most of the sketching I guess took one day like I spent the day sketching and I was going to come back the next day and sketch the rest of the figures on the top but then I realized that my back was hurting a lot because to put up this painting I had to get my friend to help me put up this canvas and I was stretching so much trying to reach the top of the wall to put the canvas on that my back started hurting and my feet were hurting a lot and I just realized that it just wasn't ideal for me to finish sketching the rest of the characters on the top of the canvas. So I would have to do that another day when I stopped being so sore. So this was a very daunting process. And at first I just really wasn't happy with it because I'm like, this is gonna take forever. How can I ever finish this? This is gonna take so long. And I was really pressuring myself because I got a grant from Brown University, one of the universities that I attend, I got a grant from them um to do this painting i applied for it and i got it so i felt under pressure because i was supposed to have this painting done in around december and i had just hadn't even started the painting process and it was january already so i said i need to get this done quickly but i also want to make sure the painting looks good um so the first few p figures took a few days to paint and i realized that i can't can't be so detailed with painting these figures because you know the whole purpose of this painting is to showcase the cowrie shells and just if i was as detailed with the figures as i usually am in a painting it just would take so long it could take months to paint this because the surface is so huge so i had to make some of the figures a little bit more abstract like not super realistic which my style isn't super realistic anyways but i made them even less realistic than I would make them and didn't pay as much attention to detail as I usually would. Because a lot of 
these cultures use a lot of different elements on their clothing, a lot of different co colors, and the shading just took forever on this painting. But after a while, after I saw this painting coming into fruition, I became a lot happier with the process and I would eventually become excited to come in the next day to work. So the way that I would section off the painting was uh, there were basically four main quadrants of the painting and I would work on one quadrant at a time and I would decide, okay, today I'm going to finish this quadrant of the painting or today I'm going to work on four figures and then I'm going to call it a day. So on most of the days I was working on five or six figures at a time and towards the end of the process I was working on nine or ten figures a day around eight to ten figures a day which was a lot and it was really hurting my feet hurting my back and I just kept on telling myself I need to take it slow and not do too much and then I just kept on pushing it even more the next day because I was just so excited and I was just wanting to get this process done Ex please excuse the, the noise I'm in my dorm room and people are being loud outside um so yeah, I want to know in the comments if any of you resonate with this piece because your culture uses cowrie shells. They're used all over the world. And when trying to narrow down which cultures use the cowrie shells, I was, please ex excuse the noise. I was looking up images. I was going through research articles, um, academic journals, and I was finding different cultures that would use cowries. And then I would look up the history and the background of, of these cultures that use cowries and I would find cultures that lived in the same region because they probably also use cowries too and then I would do research on those cultures and it turned out a lot of those cultures did use cowries and do use cowries. So basically the point of this painting is uh, to, to find which cultures use cowrie shells in their clothing as like ornamentation and their, on which cultures use cowrie shells and whether it be their hair the clothing on their body just which cowrie shells which cultures use cowrie shells in relation to their bodies so mainly in clothing but also in hair and you know earrings count too and there are so many cultures that use cowrie shells there are hundreds of cultures and there are many people who may wear a cowrie shell necklace even though it's not common for people in that region to wear cowrie shells so cowrie shells are worn worn all over the world um like i know when i was in thailand i bought a cowrie shell necklace in bangkok um so I had trouble determining if I only find one image or if I only find one article about a culture using a cowrie shell, can I use it in this painting? And usually the answer was I predominantly only included cultures where I could find substantial use of the cowrie shell in clothing. Um, but there were some exceptions to this rule. And what I did find is that cowrie shells are used a lot in jewelry, which is something I already knew. They're used a lot in necklaces. They're used a lot in hairstyles. They're used a lot in adornments for cultural festivals and to, to represent identity and to represent Africanness or to represent that you are from a certain culture. And um, a lot of times when people think of cowrie shells, they think of African culture. And I saw this girl on TikTok who was complaining that someone was wearing cowrie shells and using it as a beauty object when they're not even African. And I just thought that was a very ignorant statement because cowrie shells are not just worn by African people. And they weren't originally worn by African people to begin with. Cowrie shells are worn all around the globe, um, which the six pointed star in the middle of the piece represents the six continents that cowrie shells are worn on, North America, South America, um, Asia, Africa, um, Oceania, and Europe, cowrie shells are worn everywhere, while predominantly most of the cultures that I found that were wearing cowrie shells were in Africa and, and Oceania as well. I forgot to add that I consider this piece to be my Sistine Chapel. That is my nickname for this piece, because when I think of the Sistine Chapel, it's something that I learned about in middle school, where it took Michelangelo so long to paint but when it was finished, it was this magnificent piece. So this is so dear to me. It took so much time and I'm just so happy with it. So the culture is that the areas that really wear cowrie shells a lot are, are Oceania. So Papua New Guinea, West Papua, um, Hawaii, 
places like that, you'll find people wearing cowrie shell Samoa. You'll find a lot of people also wearing cowrie shells in Africa, specifically in West Africa in places like Nigeria, Cameroon, but even more so in East Africa in places like Kenya and Ethiopia. Cowrie shells are worn so much in among the different tribes of Ethiopia. And that's one thing to realize that is when you think about a country, a country is not a monolith. There are so many different cultures in every single country in the world. And for instance, there are some places in India where cowrie shells are worn a lot. And then there are other places in India where cowrie shells are not worn that often, right? So in the Northeast India, cowrie shells are worn a lot for, for regalia and for um, cultural clothing for festivals. And that's also another thing to point out that cowrie shells are worn a lot in masquerades and in African masquerades specifically, but in masquerades in other countries too, where people will dress up um, imitating animals or beasts or, or s for some reason, for diff different purposes, people will dress up in masquerades. And a lot of times people will use cowries. Which one thing I realized when doing this piece was people use cowrie shells for many different purposes and that was that was one reason that I did to the main reason why I decided to create this piece was to find out the different significances of 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 cowrie shells and clothing around the world and cowrie shells are used outside of clothing too they're used in furniture and objects and in many different household objects and in divination purposes among different cultures and I didn't include that in this piece because this piece was specifically focused on things in relation to the body, like clothing. So I realized that cowrie shells are used to as a form of protection. They're used in spiritual purposes and in ceremonies and all of this in relation to clothing, right? Protection um, to 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 be seen as beautiful. People wear cowrie shells to to symbolize wealth and and to be rich people were wear will wear cowrie shells because in the ancient world cowrie shells were used as money in places like the americas and in many parts of africa cowrie shells were used for money in many parts of asia such as china cowrie shells were used for money and also in taiwan people will wear cowrie shells a lot and like the ethnic minorities in their traditional wear will, will wear cowrie shells, which you'll see some of these like ethnic minorities, Aboriginal, Aboriginal people groups of Taiwan wearing cowrie shells in their clothing, which this piece is a celebration in a sense of cross-cultural connection and the sense that we're so different, which is why I'm so interested in the cowrie shell. We're so different, but we will adopt the same the same aspects, yet despite the fact that we're so different. And one of the reasons that cowrie shells are used all around the world is because of trade and and, and intercultural contact. Um, but also, cowrie shells are used naturally around the world because they're a part of nature. And one of the main reasons that, one of the main significances that cowrie shells have is femininity. Because cowrie shells look like the female vulva so which i was wondering when i first learned about cowrie shells and and when i first did the painting i was like why do these represent femininity and i didn't really understand it and until one day i was just looking at one of the cowrie shells and I, that i had and i realized it kind of did look like 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 the female vulva and it, the cowrie shells also represent the eye in certain cultures and you may wonder why do they represent the eye and i was looking at one of my cowrie shells the other day while I was painting, and I'm like, this looks so much like an eye. You may not see it at first, but after looking at these shells for so long, you just realize realize these these things. So the main things that cowrie shells represent are fertility, womanhood, protection, um, regality, wealth, and a lot of this has to do with historical purposes and just how how the cowrie shell looks and it was just such a pleasure vis visiting Oceania this summer and living in Melanesia and visiting some of Polynesia as well and I found some cowrie shells on the ocean on this on the sand of the beach and I found one walking along in the village and in, in Tana Island of Vanuatu which was just it was so beautiful to, to find a shell that I had done so much learned so much about 
And that's partially why I decided to do this painting was because when I was in the Pacific, I bought so many cowrie shell necklaces because they're just so important to me, cowrie shells. I bought so many cowrie necklaces and I had learned about so many other cultures that use cowrie shells because in my original painting, I had only found around like seven or eight cultures that use cowrie shells in their clothing. But since then, two years later, I'd found so many more cultures that use cowrie shells in their clothing. And it was an intense process. It wasn't like this information was just easy to find on which cultures use cowrie shells. It wasn't a quick Google search. It was something I had to research for months. And this research process I've been doing, I mean, technically for two years since I first started, since I did the first painting, but um, I've been seriously doing this research since around September, uh, August of, of 2023, which it's now January of 2024. So about September, October, November, December, January, around five months I've been been researching the shell and how it's used around the globe. So this is a celebration of, of cross cultures and that we're more similar than we think, but it's all it's more so than a celebration like this can be seen as a celebration because it's like intercultural, but this is like a research project. This is representing how cowrie shells can be used and are used in ornamentation as ornamentation in clothing. And it was just so interesting to see how different cultures use cowrie shells. A lot of cultures will use cowrie shells um, in their feather headdresses. A lot of cultures will use cowrie shells as headbands, as sashes ac across their waist, as as belt along their belts they'll use cowrie shells and um cultures will use cowrie shells for many different purposes and and a lot of times for festivals to show their ethnic identity they'll use the cowrie shell and it has become huge in the black american community to use cowrie shells to represent africanness and um it's also been become huge in Africa to use the cowrie shell to represent Africanness and African identity and and that just shows how how when cultures interact they they develop these these certain traits to to distinguish themselves from other people and it's just so interesting what this shell can tell us about the world and tr and trade and intercultural connection and and just how cultures will gravitate towards things naturally and will just use them and will assign significance to them and i'm studying cultural anthropology so i'm studying cultural anthropology and illustration so this painting is basically an agglomation amalgation agglomation you get what i'm saying <laughs> it is basically a summary of like what I study, what I'm interested in. I'm so interested in learning about the world and why we do things the way that we do things. And um, this painting, I'm not going to tell you the significance of everything in this painting because I think an artist shouldn't reveal all of their secrets, right? Like we don't know everything that Leonardo da Vinci was thinking or everything that Monet was thinking about his painting. So I'm not going to just describe everything to you. But just know that a lot of thought went into this piece. This isn't random. Um, and, <clears throat> oh, and also, like, another part of the world that uses cowrie shells is um, the, the Cuba kingdom, like, the, the modern-day Cuba, um, Cuba ethnic groups. And when doing this painting, I was so scared that I was going to fall down from this ladder because towards the end of the painting I was using a ladder and I was just so scared because I'm scared of heights I'm like I could fall I could hurt myself I could fall on my glass paint palette I could and the custodians they let me use um they let me use the ladder which was really really kind of them but I was so scared that I was going to fall and I didn't end up falling like I fell a few times like stumbled down the ladder but I didn't actually like fall down on the floor um but this painting, I think I've definitely become a better painter. Like, obviously, this painting isn't as details, detailed as it would have been if I would have spent months on it. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I worked in the time constraint that I had, and and I really developed this piece. And it's a, it's a significant development from the first painting, whether or not you like the first painting I did more or this painting more. But this painting has a lot more significance. I know a lot more about cowrie shells now. I 
was scrambling for information and had two weeks to do the first painting that I showed you originally. And I didn't do as much research as I would have hoped. And even with this one, like I could have done months more, years more of research. But, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, you have to decide when you're going to call it a day and when you're going to start the painting. So I there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to find about find out about the Cairo show that I wasn't able to in the time that I had. But this is a continuing project. Don't think that this is basically this is like a a conclusion of of my research. This is just the beginning. This is still the beginning. I'm still learning so much and I want to find out so much more. There's still so much information um to learn and also like I've said this before but please comment if you have any information that you want to share about your culture and the cowrie shell and and how your how cowrie shells are important to you personally or, or to your family and um this is such a cross-cultural piece that almost anyone can identify with it because there are just so many cultures across across west africa east africa latin america northeast india um, different parts of India, just all around the world that use cowrie shells. And this was another thing that I was questioning because there are a lot of, there are many companies, maybe s certain companies aren't of the ethnic group, which they're making clothing referring to. Like I saw a few guayabaras, um, like a Mexican shirt um, that had cowrie shells in them. And I don't know if these, these shirts were made by Mexican people, but I'm like, could I include that as a culture using cowrie shells? especially if it's only in those few instances and it's only used for fashion purposes like that you'll buy online and it was a tough question and then i also found out that there are some people who use cowrie shells when they're saris but also like fashion companies will do it so i didn't end up using cowrie shells in that use for that painting for this painting which it is a use for cowrie shells in clothing but um i just didn't have enough extensive information on it and I just wanted to focus like there are so many other cultures that use cowrie shells I have over 100 cultures on here and there were some that I forgot to include like I included them in my preliminary sketches but somehow it got lost and they didn't appear on this painting which is okay but there's only so much that I, I could include and and the, there's a lack of a focal point in this picture which it becomes more clear towards the end which I'm okay with the fact that there's not a, a huge focal point in this picture but since there's so many figures in in the page um it's harder to focus on each individual element which i kind of like something that i love doing in my work is isn't is not having a focal point and letting your eye wander around the page because there's just so much busyness um going around but it's hard to see the cowrie shells like from far away if you're looking closely at the painting, you can see the use of the cowrie shells around the painting. But if you're looking at the painting as a whole, it's kind of hard to determine that there are cowrie shells in the painting, which is okay because it makes you go closer and want to look and try and find out the significance of the piece. So basically, all I'm going to tell you is um, the painting is basically this woman, um, this little girl. Um, she's ageless. like She could be any age. Um, but she's on the beach and she finds this cowrie shell and looks into it. And basically, when you look into the cowrie shell, you find out all of this information. And it's it's a representation of it's a lineage of all these different cultures and peoples that currently use cowrie shells. This is about current use of cowrie shells around the world. There are many cultures that have used cowrie shells in certain ways on their clothing throughout the past few centuries or years or I found a lot of black and white photographs but I did not include those because this is about the current age most of my work regarding culture ethnography art visual anthropology has to do with with the current age and doesn't have to do with something that is outdated sometimes I do that but most of the time it's about the current age um but in the front of in the bottom of the painting um you will see some of the Kuba cultures represented, which represents the connection between past and present because these Kuba kings and Kuba royalty, they represent a lineage of, like in this painting, of the cowrie shell being used for hundreds of years um, in clothing. So, and also in this painting, like 
no one in this painting represents the specific likeness of, of any one specific person, right? I use plenty of images, plenty of articles, and you know, I based, based the images of these people off of many different people and also my own personal style. So this these images don't re represent one specific person. They draw off a lot of different people and images. Um, so... Yeah, here you can see the six different points of the star, which represent the six continents, which use cowrie shells. Obviously, Antarctica cowrie shells are not worn in Antarctica. Um, so that's why I didn't include seven stars. Um, but ultimately, this painting, I, I feel like it shows that I can do things that I put my mind to. And I'm just really proud of myself that I decided to do something this big. It's the biggest painting I've ever worked on, the biggest artwork I've ever worked on, and the longest the artwork that's taken me the most amount of time. Like the painting process took around 70 hours. The planning process plus the painting process, the planning process, the hanging process, the everything process in total took well over 100 hours plus the research. This took so much time. I don't even know how much time it took. But on camera, 70 hours of painting is represented here. And there were a lot of tough decisions that were made. In this painting, I used a mix of oil paint and graphite, watercolor, graphite. So I use watercolor graphite pencils mainly for the background. Um, here you see I'm going in with the pencil and adding in um, the gray, the gray details, um, which that's the graphite, which is tying the painting together. And there were a lot of tough decisions that were made. And... Some of them, a lot of them I stand by. Some of them I'm still not too sure about, but I'm still proud of myself because it's hard to do a composition this big and with this many figures. It's like really difficult, but I'm happy I did it. And it's a testament to the fact that I want to learn more about the world. And I think the world has a lot of secrets that we still don't know. Like a lot of people think we know everything about science and everything about the world or so much, but we don't even know 1% of the information that is available in the world. There's just so much to learn. And I would advise you to explore it. I would advise you to explore it and to learn as much as you can about the world because there's just so much more to learn. There's always going to be more information that we can learn. And right here, I, I'm i doing the fin finishing touches um, of the painting. And this was a wonderful, wonderful ride. And I'm just so happy that I did this and thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned a little bit about the Kyrie show and a little bit about my painting and artistic process and yeah this was a really really great experience but this is my painting behind me and this is I'm doing a photo shoot this is my first outfit as you can see so this is the end result this is the final painting as you can see here, it is finished. So this is my second outfit for the photo shoot. This is the final painting, it's finally finished. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I'm here with my friend Seraphim, and he's taking photos of me. So this is the final result, and I'm rather happy with how it turned out. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at its underscore Yomi. Thank you.